Are y'all ready for the word this morning? Praise the Lord. Well, before I get into the word of God, um, I just want to share a little bit. If you'll open up your Bibles to Malachi chapter 3. Let me do that again. Open up your Bibles. Malachi chapter 3. And since I've been teaching Bible school, um, I always tell my students, when you get there, say amen. So say amen when you're there in your Bible. (laughs) Hallelujah. The Lord is good. He's so good. Thank you, Lord. Everybody there? Say amen. So Malachi chapter 3, this morning I want to talk about the blessing of a tither. Amen? Can you all say amen? Amen. Say the blessing of a tither. So Malachi 3 verse 10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven... And pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I, this is God speaking, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, and all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land says the lord of hosts can you all say amen so god says bring all the tithe what does tithe mean it means 10 percent amen says bring all the tithe into the storehouse why so there will be food in my house are you in the house of god right now Is there food in the house of God right now? See, there's a reason why this church is a working church. It's not because we're, like Pastor Kevin says, we're sacrificing chickens every Saturday. No, it's because the children of God have decided to obey the word of God. Amen. They have strengthened the house of God so that there is food in the house. Amen. This church is a working church. We're working every day, amen? We're not sitting down twiddling our thumbs, you know, waiting for something to happen. No, we're, we're doing what God has commanded us to do, and that's go and make disciples, amen? So I just want to, I want to share with you because you need to know what's happening. We're a working church because we're feeding the hungry in our community. How many families are we feeding every month? Over 500 families we're feeding every month, amen? That's you guys too. You might not be here physically, but that's your part as well, amen? We're feeding the hungry in our community. Every service, we are feeding your children, amen? And we don't, you know, when we do outreaches, we don't just go into the community with nothing in our hands. No, we take food as well, amen? See, God equips you to be strong and go out, amen? We invest in preaching the gospel through the medias. We go to nations. The building is being repaired and remodeled where it needs to be, amen? Not only that, we're supporting other ministries and missions and churches. We are supporting the orphan and the widow. And that's because there is food in the house. Say there's food in the house. Together we're stronger, amen? And then he goes on to say, try me or test me. Come on, there's a promise to the tither. It's his word. And I know this rubs people the wrong way, but we can't change the word to suit you, amen? There is a promise to the one that does. The scripture indicates that when you do, God will cause these things to happen. God will do it. He opens up the heavens to you. He opens up the windows of heaven. Open heaven causes the rain to fall upon your land. 
Whatever was dying now comes back to life. Whatever needs to grow, God sends the rain to grow. Amen? God will send you the rain whenever you need it because the windows of heaven are open. Second thing is God's blessing will be so great that it will overflow. You'll just not have enough for you, but you'll have enough for those around you. Amen? He's a big God. When we're giving to God, man, he's a big God. We don't serve a tiny God. We don't serve a broke God. We serve a rich God who is in heaven on streets of gold. He doesn't need what you've got. But there's a blessing in obedience. So it says God's blessings will be so great that they will overflow, not just in material things, but in spiritual things. Things that you cannot put a price tag on. He gives you joy, peace, health, great marriage, favor with man. He gives you wisdom. He opens new doors. Amen. He leads you and guides you. Hallelujah. Things that money cannot buy. And he not only gives you what you need, but he also gives you the desires of your heart. He's a good God. Say, he's a good God. Look at your neighbor and say, he's a good God. God rebukes the devourer for you. Come on. So your seed will not be destroyed. Your seed will be divinely protected by God to produce for you. That's what the word of God says. That's God's word. It's so exciting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's your skina. He's got you. The fourth thing is you will be fruitful. Even when it seems like nothing is happening, God causes your seed to grow. Amen. That's a promise. Man, when it looks like nothing's happening and, and you're, you start to get worried a little bit, you go back to the promise of God and know that he is the one who causes the seed to grow. Thank you, Jesus. The fifth thing, all nations will call you blessed. The blessing of God will be evident upon your life. You don't have to tell people you're blessed. They'll know you're blessed. Amen. And not because of what you possess, but because of who possesses you. Amen. And you will be delightful. Say, I will be delightful. Now say it with a smile. <laughs> but you'll be delightful because your trust is in God. You won't be moved by what happens around you. Your confidence, your security is not in what you have in your pocket or in your bank account. Your confidence, your security is in your God, your provider, amen? See, these are the blessings of a tither. When you tithe, it comes with a blessing attached because the word of God says so. Not because I said it. The word of God says it, amen? There's a blessing in honoring God with our tithe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving to God is a form of worship. To honor God and his faithfulness to provide, it's not a burden. If it's a burden, then you've got to check your heart. Amen? The word of God never forces you to do anything. He always gives you a choice. You don't, you don't want to do it? Don't do it. Nobody's forcing you to do anything. But when God gets a hold of your heart, you can never give him enough. He just has everything. He has everything. And, you know, I, I've been there where... Before, you know, before I got married, I didn't grow up in the things of God. I didn't, you know, I grew up a different religion and, and I was never taught any of this. So it was like, it was very new to me and very hard to understand because I had never 
thought about trusting God with my finances. But, you know, I started working when I was 14, and I know that probably wasn't legal, but it is what it is, amen? It was the 80s or 90s or 80s probably. But, um, and you know, I worked, but I never had enough. Anybody been there? It seems like you're working and working and all this, you know, you're getting all this money coming in, but it seems like it just goes right through you. Like it's never enough. And I never understood that. And when I got married, you know, one of the things my husband said is, we're going to tithe. We're going to tithe. That's non-negotiable. And so I had to get my heart right. I had to find out what the word of God said. Amen. And I can tell you this, it was a journey for me. It definitely was a journey because it wasn't easy when you're working all week and then you got to, you know, hey, now you got to give to God. But, you know, I learned that when I put God first and when I put him above all else, he makes sure that what he promised comes to pass. And so we've never lacked, amen. I have seen the blessing of God upon our life, not because of anything else, but because we've been obedient to God and he's had our hearts, amen. See, if it's worked for me all these 20 something years, why would I stop now? Why would I stop now? When God has blessed me all these years, why would I stop? He's been my provider. He's been everything he said he is. I can trust him. Can you trust him? Can you trust him to do what he said he would do? Because that's what it boils down to. Can you trust him to do what he said he would do? Amen? Even in the last two years, you know, when everything was crazy and everybody was buying toilet paper, you know, we want to forget, but no, we can't forget. Couldn't find toilet paper anywhere. God still provided the toilet paper, amen. (laughs) But when everything was crazy and people were losing jobs left and right and it seemed like there wasn't enough and people were hoarding, how many of you can say God was still faithful to add upon your life? Amen. He was still faithful to add. God doesn't remove. He adds, amen. He adds to your life. He's an additional God. He's a multiplying God, amen. There is no fear to those whose confidence is in the Lord. There's no fear. You cannot fear when your confidence is in your big God. So you might say, I need so-and-so much for tomorrow to pay the bills. And we've been there. How many of you have been there? Where you're just like, Lord, I need you to come through. And has he ever failed you? He's never failed us. He's always been faithful. He's always provided. Amen? And he will keep on providing. I have never been disappointed when I give to God. And you will not be disappointed as long as you give to God God's way. Amen? God's way. And I pray, you know, this... this. Um, We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what's, you know, we have all this stuff being yelled at us about economy and money and all these things, and we don't know. Nobody knows what's going to happen. But our God is in the future, amen? He already knows what's going to happen. And as long as we put our confidence in him, as long as everything that we are is invested into the kingdom of God, he will not leave you nor forsake you, amen? You will not be begging for bread, amen? You will have more than enough because that's what the word of God says. You will not lack. So get fear out of your life. It doesn't belong in your life. Fear does not come from God. Fear is a spirit that comes to rob you of your today and rob you of your tomorrow. But our God is faithful, amen? There is joy and peace in heaven, in us, amen? In us. We can walk in that assurance that God said he, what God said he would do, he's going to do. Amen? Do y'all receive that this morning? Receive it. Say, I am blessed. Look at your neighbor and say, I am blessed. Look at your other neighbor and say, I am blessed. Hallelujah. This morning, 
We're going to pick up today's tithes and offerings. And I just felt of the Lord, you know, we've been talking a lot about the offering, but I felt of the Lord, we needed to go back to the blessing of a tither as well. Amen. Because there's so many benefits. There's so many things that God says he's going to do and he's faithful to his word. And so I just felt this morning that we needed to share that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are y'all ready to give this morning? And we don't give out of pressure, compulsion, remember? It's between you and God. Amen? So y'all stand up on your feet. The Lord is good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning to honor you, Father, to honor you with our tithe, with our offering. Lord, we thank you that our confidence and our hope is in you, Father, that your kingdom cannot be shaken, Father, and we stand in an unshakable kingdom, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that as we give unto you what your word says we shall have, Father. And I thank you that we are blessed wherever we go, that we shall not lack in any area of our life, Lord, but that you continue to provide to overflow, Father. I thank you that you use your children to be the answer to this world, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you multiply every seed that is sown, Father. I thank you that the blessings of a tither are upon their life, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, because you shall do great and mighty things that even, Lord, what seems impossible to man, you shall make possible, Lord. And I thank you for increase, financial increase in every business that is attached to your kingdom, Lord. I thank you that you prosper the work of their hands, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you bring in business from the north, the south, the east, and the west, Lord. I thank you that the favor of God causes them to rise up to the top, Lord, that people will come looking for them because they know that the favor and the blessing of God is upon their business, upon their workplace, Lord. And I thank you, Father, because we are so richly blessed, Father. You have given us all all things, Lord. And I thank you right now because your blessing is commanded upon our life and our families in Jesus name. And everybody says, amen. You can come and give as God leads you this morning. Praise the Lord.